Hey guys, this is Maliha from the Site Blogger, and today I have a quick, maybe I'll try to make it quick, um, video about how I find topics to write about when you're struggling to, you know, find topics in your niche. Um, because it happens to the best of us, we write things, we think we know what to write about, but there comes a time when we're like, okay, what else are we going to write about in this topic? So when that time comes, you have to kind of figure out what kind of blog posts to write about. And there is one method that I have found um, that have been extremely helpful to me. And before I show you how I use this method to find blog post topics, I just want to point out that um, I do use a tool uh, which is not free. Um, however, this tool is way cheaper than, say, um, products like SEMrush, Ahrefs, or uh, similar software out there um, that can kind of help you research topics and keywords and etc. Now, uh, there's another point that I want to make about keyword research before I go into um, this video is that I hardly ever do any keyword research because I'm just not that blogger who wants to rank on Google's top position for every single blog post. I, I really don't care about that much. What I care about is that whoever lands on my blog, whether they come from SEO, like you know Google search, or they come from um, Pinterest or social media or wherever they're coming from, I want them to have a full experience of um, understanding not only the topic I'm writing about, but also kind of getting a feel for the kind of blogger that I am, because I'm part of my blog's branding as well. So I want them to convert into my audience. So basically, I want them to want to come back to my blog because they like my writing, because they like the way that I provide information, and because they actually find value in my writing. So for that to work, I don't really write for search engines. So even when I optimize my content for search engines, it never is really about keywords, but mostly it's about um, finding the topics that people actually want to learn about and then giving people the most that I can um, as someone teaching them about that topic. So hopefully that makes sense. So for me, more than keyword, what is important is the topic. Now some of you may be wondering, okay, so how about I write about a topic that's so good, but if I don't optimize with keywords, how are people going to find it? Don't worry too much about it, because if you write a really good blog post about a certain topic, believe it or not, keywords kind of take care of themselves, because in order to write a really good blog post, you have to constantly ask yourself, what are my audience asking? So the concept of keyword kind of turns into um, what is it that my audience is searching for. So if you can write with that in mind, you will have organically take care of the most important keywords. To give you an example, one of my blog posts that uh, ranks pretty high on my website is how to sell Canva templates. I started selling Canva templates a couple of years ago and um, it soon became one of my top um, income sources. So even though I sell Canva templates on the side, I make one to three K per month selling those templates. So I wanted to write about it so that people would also, people, you know, people who know how to use Canva, people who have an eye for a good design and people who are trying to make some extra income every month, they would read my blog post, learn about it. And, you know, if they want to, they could, go and start a Canva template business. When I wrote this blog post, I didn't do any keyword research. What I did was I wrote everything that I knew um, about this business, about how to start this business and run this business. And when I wrote this blog post, I thought of myself, you know, when I started this business, what are the things that I struggled with and what are the things that helped me kind of push through and 
go past the hurdles, the initial hurdles, and the things that helped me succeed. So when I thought like that, I was able to write this super long blog post. Let's see, this blog post is 28 minute read, so it's really long. But when I wrote this blog post, you know, because I was so um, focused on giving all the values that I could, the keyword part kind of took care of itself. You know, I didn't really hold back any information. I just gave everything that I had. And so naturally, anything that people could possibly ask regarding this topic, I had them covered. So now, somehow, even though I did zero keyword research, this blog post, within just a few months, started ranking on Google's, you know, uh, top spots, like I would say within the first um, five spots. And because of that, not only my traffic kind of boosted within just a few months, um, it got boosted and people were starting to come to my blog and um, my email subscription went high and my traffic went high and basically um, a lot of things changed around here since I wrote that blog post. And I try to think about it, I try to remember it whenever I'm writing a new blog post that what matters is that you find a topic that people are interested in and then you write a really good blog post without holding anything back and give people as much as possible. And I think that's one of the biggest keys to being a successful blogger. Forget about writing for search engines. And okay, so just a disclaimer here, I'm not saying that don't worry about search engines at all, but search engine optimization is much more than keywords, you know? So um, search engine optimization is setting up a good website, um, setting up a fast website, um, having good uh, user interface, having good um, user experience, all of that plays into search engine optimization. Keyword, I would say in 2024, is the least important factor of optimizing blog posts for search engines. So with that in mind, there is one tool that I have found extremely helpful when it comes to researching the topics that people are searching for. And you can find these same functionalities in other tools as well. Uh, so at the end of, uh, sorry, at the beginning of this video, I talked about SEMrush and Ahrefs, and those tools can be used for this as well, but those are really expensive tools. So the tool that I use is called SpyFu. And I cannot recommend this tool enough. And just so you know, this is not a sponsored post. Um, so whatever I'm saying, it comes from a place of real appreciation for a tool that's really good um, and one that I'm experienced with. So even though I'm not making any money from it, I don't, I'm not even an affiliate for this company, but because I love it so much that I felt the need to make this video. Anyway, so um, SpyFu is pretty amazing and it's kind of like a keyword research tool, but I personally, like I said, I don't really care much about keyword. So the way I use SpyFu is I use the tool to find out the kind of blog posts that drive the most traffic for the people um, I aspire or the bloggers that I aspire to, basically. So um, another thing is that this tool is way cheaper than some of the other tools out there. So if I go to the pricing page right now, okay, so the basic plan is $39 per month. That's not super cheap, but it's way cheaper than an SEM rush uh, pricing. So SEM rush pricing, let's see, that's another keyword research tool. And this tool comes with um, a subscription fee of $129 per month. Compare that to $39 per month and you will see that it's super, um, how, what's the word, um, affordable basically. But on top of that, they have a limited time, go time offer going right now. 
So if you come to the middle column here, limited time offer, it has a plan for $9 per month lifetime, by the way, as long as you stay subscribed. And you can claim that, and it's been there for a few weeks now. So, um, you know, if you're watching this video, I have no idea how long they're going to offer this plan, but um, it doesn't really say anything. But I would recommend signing up as soon as you can because $9 per month, that's pretty freaking amazing. Now, here's the thing. The special limited time offer comes with one um, condition attached is that when you sign up for SpyFi, you also sign up for their latest AI tool, RivalFlow AI. Now, I'm not going to spend any time talking about RivalFlow AI. It's an AI tool. Um, it helps you close gap with your uh, competitors. Uh, but the thing is that uh, you have to sign up for a RivalFlow free trial, which lasts for, I think, I forgot how long, maybe a couple of weeks or a month, I don't know. Uh, so you have to sign up for that as well. But the good news is that as long as you, um, if you don't like RivalFlow AI and if you cancel your um, RivalFlow AI subscription only, because there are two different subscriptions, by the way, one subscription is for SpyFu and then the second subscription is for RivalFlow AI. Now RivalFlow AI, after the initial trial is up, renews at full price, which uh, I think $30, $40 or something, I don't remember. But if you don't want that, just make sure to cancel your RivalFlow AI subscription before the trial ends, before the free trial ends. And that way you won't be charged for RivalFlow AI, but you will still be able to keep your SpyFu subscription for $9 a month. So that is the deal. And like I said, they're not sponsoring me. Uh, I'm not an affiliate for them, but because this deal is pretty freaking amazing, I highly recommend that you snap it up um, if budget is an issue and if you can't be on SEMrush or Ahrefs and things like that. All right, so once you have signed up for it, this is how I use SpyFu to find out topics that um, bloggers that I like, bloggers that um, I want to be like at some point in the future. Um, I use this tool to find out what these guys are writing about. And I, this is how I do it. So let me log in. I'm already a subscriber. So this is what SpyFu looks like. And this is what I do. I go to um, the person, let's say the blogger that um, I'm interested in. Um, let's say smart blogger. Uh, Smart Blogger is a really pretty freaking amazing blog by John Morrow. And even though, you know, um, I don't consider him my direct competitor because um, John Morrow and Smart Blogger have been around for a very long time. So it's going to take me a very long time to get to their level. However, I can find out the things that um, bring uh, the blog posts that bring the most traffic to smartblogger.com. And this is how I find it. I will type their blog URL and then look for, uh, and then hit search. And then on the top navigation, I will go to SEO research. And then certain tabs related to SEO research will open up in the second tier navigation over here. If you follow my cursor, the yellow blob, and from the second tier navigation, I will click this one, top pages. So it's the third tab from the end. So I will click that. And see that I'm not actually looking at keywords here. So SEO keywords would be this tab right here, but that's not what I'm looking at. I'm looking at top pages right here. And these are the top pages, the pages that bring the most traffic to smartblogger.com. So 39 imagery examples plus seven types to stimulate the senses. So Smart Blogger talks a lot about writing, you know, um, they share a lot of writing tips. And so their audience expects Smart Blogger to write about those things. So naturally, as you would expect, 
Um, these are uh, some of the top pages on the Smart Blogger. Then the other one, the next top page is 15 plus irony examples you don't need. Um, okay, another writing related blog post. The third blog post is uh, looks like a, a review type blog post, ClickBank, The Brutally Honest Must Read Guide for 2024. So if you're someone who uh, does affiliate marketing, then you might be interested in that. So Smart Blogger, as you can see, they talk about writing, they talk about blogging, um, and associated topics such as affiliate marketing and whatnot. So um, yeah, so you can go through these pages and you can see um, what they are. And you don't necessarily have to write about what they are writing about, but it does give you an idea for the kind of topics that people are interested in. And I think that's extremely important if you want to be um, a blogger um, and uh, if you want to be someone that people come to for, um, you know, certain things, certain your t something, certain things related to your niche, basically. So smart blogger is in my niche. So uh, blogging and writing and uh, content marketing. So it helps me to know what people find interesting in this blog. So for you, it may be a different blog. So maybe you're a blogger um, in a vegan blogging world. So um, let's let's find a vegan blogging website. So uh, 15 keto friendly vegan recipes. And let's see, Delish. I'm just trying to find websites um, that have vegan recipes. So first one uh, came up, Delish. Next one is Nutritiously. And let's see, Eating Well, Perfect Keto. Um, so um, let's look at Nutritiously. All right, looks like a decent blog. Or maybe more than decent, I don't know. Um, I've never... Uh, come to this blog before, but let's look at what kind of topics are trending on their blog. So I'm going to copy the main URL, not the not the entire one using the slug. So I'm in a blog post right now, so I'm seeing slug as well, but I don't need that. So I will go to the home page of this blog, and then I will copy the link, and then I will go back to SpyFu, and then I paste that link and then click search. We're already on top, top pages, so that's, that's good. We're going directly to top pages. And these are some of the top performing pages on that website. So 22 plus vegan keto recipes. Is that keto or keto? I don't know. Um, 35 easy vegan recipes for beginners. 15 plus delicious protein powder recipes. So you know, if you're into the vegan food uh, blogging world, you know that you can easily incorporate those topics for your blog as well. So vegan keto recipes, low carb, um, family friendly, or what, where did it, okay, family friendly vegan recipes that are easy to make, um, protein powder recipes, and then vegan grocery list for beginners, and then 15 healthy high calorie lunch ideas. So you can look at those things and you can get ideas because people are searching for them. And that's why those pages have the most traffic, right? So here's the reframe that I want to talk about. Um, whenever, if you're a brand new blogger, a lot of brand new bloggers get um, roped into, you know, uh, thinking about keywords and finding keywords. And a lot of brand new bloggers have no idea uh, what they are and how irrelevant they're becoming as of late, especially with AI and whatnot. Um, so you really don't need to research keyword anymore, especially for, you know, bloggers like us, like one or two people blogger um, doing this on the side. Researching keyword is just going to waste your time. You don't need to do that. Okay. If you're like a company, like a big company, and you can hire a team of people who are, whose only job is to do SEO stuff, then for sure, yeah, hire a dedicated person to research keyword for you. But we don't have that kind of time. We side bloggers do not have that kind of time. We are part-time bloggers. Uh, we barely have enough time to write one or two blog posts per week. 
So how are we going to, you know, why would you waste your time doing keyword research when it's not even all that necessary these days? Instead, look for the topics that are, um, you know, that are popular with people. And this is how you find those popular topics. You go to a blog um, that's popular in your niche and then find out the blog posts that they're ranking for. Um, sorry, not they're ranking for, they're driving traffic um, for or with. And then uh, write your version of those blog posts as well as possible so that, you know, eventually people will start finding your blog as well. And that's that has been my trick to getting traffic or increasing traffic to my blog. So if you're someone who is trying to do what I do, do this. Anyway, that's it for today. And hopefully it was a little helpful. And by the way, I have... Um, a blog post where I go a little deeper into uh, this topic um, and it's a webinar it's a 1.5 hour long webinar that I made recently and I will leave a link to that webinar in the description of this video so feel free to check it out bye